Uh, uh, what, what an adventure that was. Uh, we should really get that ground bridge going again. And this time, actually get our locations right. But yeah, then, I'm back here again. What month is it? Wait, it's October. You know what that means? It's Anarachnoween! Yeah, I know, it's not really much special or anything. No big, big creepy organ music or anything. And... But, uh... Hey, we got this little skull here. That's a bit... Halloweeny and pumpkins. We've got lots of 3D pumpkins. That's very Halloweeny too, I guess. Yeah, I guess. I guess I, I should talk about an album from a band that that's, that's more than my associate with the spookiness of Halloween. Mainly one of my favorite heavy metal bands, Iron Maiden. You see, back. Way back in my third review, I did a kind of sort of review of uh, of I Maiden Legacy of the Beast, a comic based or based around the band I Maiden and its mascot Eddie the Head. Uh, it was kind of my attempt at reviewing both a comic and one that's kind of based around sort of music and a band or at least a band, but I. After all this time, I figured I might as well review an actual Iron Maiden album. And I suppose it's one that's reaching its 35th anniversary a couple of days ago. And that album is simply Somewhere in Time. Kicking off this album is Caught Somewhere in Time. Technically a title track of sorts. And boy is it a kicker. This is a very fast paced song, on par with singles like The Trooper and Run to the Hills, and yet almost twice as long. In it, vocalist Bruce Dickinson sings to the listener if, and, and asks them if they have an open mind as well as some time to lose and choose, off, essentially offering us to a musical equivalent of a roller coaster ride. Then there are the two refrains that, that are worth pointing up that, across this song. First is the line, time is always on my side, and the chorus of caught somewhere in time. As you can imagine, time seems to be a common theme, or THE common theme, of this song alone. So basically, this song is the closest thing I made will ever get to doing a Doctor Who song. I mean, hey. They did a song based on that obscure Prisoner song a couple of years prior, so anything's possible. In the middle of it, of course, is dominated and dedicated to the to an to an awesome guitar solo by guitarists Dave Murray and Adrian Smith. And boy, does it not feel like a waste of time! It it brush it goes on by, and and it and you feel that rush with it. And it lasts for, like, for almost a minute and a half. How they go on that, I really don't know. But it is a simple stroke of stroke of simple genius. Then, of course, it returns to, with another verse and chorus for closing out with a, with a classic, typical heavy metal closer with the drums of Nicker McBrain and just goes out with a bang. It is a brilliant start to this album as many other Iron Maiden albums have with their good songs. The next song, Wasted Years, was the first single off the album and like any single of theirs, this is certainly catchy as hell. But also at the same time, it's very relatable in some way, addressing, or at least implying, the stress the band I Maiden felt 
when they've been touring over the past few years up to that point. Almost like what Marillion did with the Levers or what Gorillas did with the Fall. Across with the lines like across seven seas from the coast of gold, I'm traveling far and wide. Which kind of kind of fits the imagery of the band kind of been travel traveling along tourist bus from country to country, from one music stadium to the next, and kind of pl playing their gigs live in concert and all that. Then the choruses come along to tell us that we shouldn't waste our time trying to find and get back the years that we've wasted, because if we're just gonna keep, if we're gonna waste our time, we're just gonna waste our time trying to find the time that we wasted. It's essentially a paradox. That and we sh if if we are to if we're to live like we're in golden years, we just have to realize it and spend our time wisely and and for more important matters. We should learn from our past troubles, mistakes and regrets, move on beyond them and move forward. Move forward with our lives and kind of do new things for a change. So, if a song with a good moral like that isn't proof enough that they, that I made it, aren't just a bunch of devil worshippers, I don't know what will. Then there's Sea of Madness. If a song like Still Life from the Peace of Mind album could be compared to the works of Edgar Allan Poe, this song reminds me a bit more of something out of H.P. Lovecraft. Not necessarily the big cosmic creatures that he's often known for, but rather the themes and tone and mood they kind of evoke. In this, Bruce kind of sings about how people crying and there's fires burning in the streets at night, most likely painting an image of a riot or a protest, and naturally Bruce expresses a bit of horror in reaction to this, saying that his eyes can't, he can't believe what his eyes are seeing, that he feels his heart shaking and all that, and he also mentions, mention, he also references the eagle and the dove in the chorus bit, and in a way they both represent patriotism and peace respectively. And it's honestly all drowned, and of course, it's all drowned out in this metaphorical sea of madness. How easily people can get so spooked and panicked and so full of anger and rage that it all drives us all to madness. And it all seems inevitable. It's also implied that the person singing is observing all this madness going on from. A kind of near-death experience, or at least an out-of-body perspective, adding more to the sense of helplessness that is expressed in Bruce's vocals, and the music itself does help emphasize that kind of almost melancholy but still very active paranoid mood that we've seen in later songs like Fear of the Dark or The Seventh Sun or The Clairvoyant. In any, in any respect, this is one of their more underrated songs in my opinion, and I think this deserves just as much recognition as a potentially good Iron Maiden song. After the new Spore of Madness that was Sea of Madness, Side A ends with another 7 minute epic, Heaven Can Wait. With its fast pace and Bruce's more punky vocals this time around, this feels more in tune with some of the early pre-Number of the Beast days and songs, back when Paul Diano was the singer of the band. This, along with the previous song, were also among the first of the I main band of the songs to utilize guitar synthesizers, if even faintly and sparingly. And while, while a song like Hello Be Thy Name was about a man coming to terms and accepting his inevitable death or death sentence, this song, Heaven Can Wait, 
is about a man who's trying to defy death, one who's trying to escape it and try to continue on living. It's about the realization of one's own death and expressing fear, concern and worry and a desire to be brought back to earth and back to life and kind of saying how heaven can wait for another for his time in another day and then part way through the song a heavenly voice comes down also sung by Bruce tells him to hold their hand promising them immortality a, a way to the promised land and eternal happiness and all that and it is also is that then gets followed by like 50 seconds of these awesome almost choir like backing vocals just going oh, oh it it just you really do get a sense of that grandiose scale just from that little bit alone then it gets then we come back with Bruce singing more verses and choruses this time questioning about about whether or not he really is back on back down to earth or he's still in limbo or it's all really just a weird fever dream of his, like a nightmare or something. It all kind of ends on this ambiguous note, which I do kind of like in a lot of Iron Maiden songs and most and a lot of other metal bands. It is another great epic from the from the band, and I think it's songs like this and so like caught somewhere in time that kind of paved way for the more melodic, more more progressive style kind of music, more complex and more extended stuff like the entirety of Sun, Sun of the Sun, Sun, and even whole albums like The Final Frontier and The Book of Souls. It's, it's stuff like this that kind of began with, with early songs like Phantom the Opera and even Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner that would soon pave way for a kind of neo-progressive metal kind of sound that Iron Maiden will eventually come to adopt.